Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will dive into VLSI testing with a numerical example. So we will explore key concepts like fault modeling using single stack at faults, exhaustive testing, test vectors, fault coverage, equivalent faults and fault collapsing. So as you can see, this is the circuit that we will be discussing today. So X1, X2 and X3, these are the three primary inputs and why this is the primary outputs. Now every, uh, every signal line has been named. So this is A, then this is B. Then this is a stem out. So this uh, this signal is named as D. This is E. The in uh, the input of the inverter is E. Then we have uh, its output as F. Then this is C. This line is H. This is G. This is I. So we have a total of nine signal lines. So we will implement fault modeling of this circuit using stuck at fault models. We will identify the test vectors for 100% fault coverage. We will identify the set of equivalent faults and we will finally calculate the number of collapsed faults. So first let us understand what is stuck at fault and basically what is a fault. So consider a simple example of an inverter. We have input as A and the output is Y. So this is the truth table. Here we have the input A. So input A can have two values 0 or 1. Then we have Y. Y is the output. So first of all we are discussing for correct response. So when input is 0 or logic low the output will be logic high and when input is logic high the output will be 0 or logic low. This is the correct response. Now what will be the value of Y if a is stuck at 0 means A will be forever 0. So if A is 0 then Y will be 1 always. So for this is the actual this is what the value that we are giving as a user and this is the value of A because it is stuck at 0. So A is stuck at 0. Now we are finding the faulty response. So in both the cases it will be 1 because A is stuck at 0. Suppose this line is shorted to a high voltage then or it is shorted to a ground then it will always be stuck at 0 whatever we are giving input here. If this line is stuck to ground this will be always be a 0. So uh, let's suppose uh, this line is stuck to ground. then A will be forever 0, whatever, even if we are giving, giving any input. So, Y if A is stuck at 0, so this is the faulty response, it will always be 1. Then, similarly, we can have another fault at A which is stuck at 1. So, A is a line, it can either be 0 or 1. So, if it is stuck at 1, so if A is stuck at 1, if A is always logic high, then Y will always be logic 0. So in both the cases, Y will be logic 0. Now the fault can occur at input also and can occur at output also. So what will be value of Y if Y is stuck at 0 means this line is forever stuck at 0. So obviously Y if Y is stuck at 0, in both the cases, Y value will be 0 only. So this is the correct response and these three are the faulty response for these faults. This is the fault. This is the faulty response for the fault A is stuck at 0. This is the faulty response for the fault A is stuck at 1. And this is the faulty response for the fault Y is stuck at 0. So these are the input patterns A, 0 and 1 and these are the responses. This is the correct response. This is the faulty response. You can see the definition of fault failure from these lines. You can go through them. So now we are coming to our circuit. So you can see here we have three primary inputs X1, X2 and X3. So uh, X1, X2 and X3. So uh, there are a total of eight possible input combinations. Uh, X1 can be 0, X2 can be 0, X3 can be 0 or X1 can be 0, X2 can be 0, X3 can be 1. So in this way, 
there will be eight possible combinations so these are listed here and hence maximum eight test vectors are possible because for each input combination we will have one test vector so these are the input combination or test vectors then this is the output y for correct working of this circuit so if x1 is 0 x2 is 0 the output of this AND gate will be 0 if x3 is 0 the output of this AND gate will also be 0 so y will be 0 so when x1 x2 x3 are 0 0 0 y will be 0 if x1 x2 and x3 are 0 0 1 so x1 and x2 are 0 x1 is 0 so output of this AND gate will be 0 x2 is 0 so output of this NOT gate will be 1 and x3 is also 1 so output of this AND gate will be 1 so the output of this OR gate will be 1 so this is Y will be 1 so Y is 1 so this row denotes the correct response this row denotes the correct response now these rows are for false at these lines so a can be stuck at 0 we are assuming that one one uh, signal can be at fault maximum so a can be stuck at 0 so this row denotes the output values for a is stuck at 0 so a is stuck at 0 if a is always stuck at 0 what will be the value of y Similarly, if A is always stuck at 1, what will be the value of Y? Similarly, if B is always stuck at 0, what will be the value of Y? If B is always stuck at 1, what will be the value of Y? So, this second row is the correct response. But these 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th and 1th, 19th, row that is for i stuck at 1 is not shown here because there was a lack of space but you can understand that um, these 18 rows these denote the faulty response so this second row denotes the correct response these rows denotes the faulty response now we are comparing this faulty response with the correct response and whenever there is a deviation we have marked it so if A is stuck at 0, then for 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. The output is same as if there was no fault. This 6, the output is same as if there was no fault. But for these last two, the output is changing. So if there was no fault, the output should be 1. But if there is fault, the output is 0. If there is no fault, the output should be 1. But if there is fault, the output is 0. So these two are the deviations. They are highlighted by red. Similarly, for A is stuck at 1. Now we have these 6 lines. So there, uh, the, we have these 9 lines. So there can be a maximum of 18 stuck at false. <coughs> now we want to detect these faults. So one way would be to give all the possible 8 input uh, combinations and hence detect the fault. Suppose if we want to detect the A stuck at 0 fault, then what input can we give? We can give either 110 or 111 and check the output. Because for A stuck at 0, the correct output is 1. But we will get 0 as the output. So we will know that the circuit has some fault or we can give 111 as the input and A will be stuck at 0 the output will be 0 so we can see that there is a fault because the response will be different from the correct response so if we want to do the testing of this circuit for the fault we can either include all the test vectors but we do not want to do the exhaustive testing so we only want to include some test vectors how do we do that so see first of all we need to identify the faults which can be detected by only one test vector so if you see d stuck at 1 this can be detected only by this test vector 100 also e stuck at 0 this can be detected only by the test vector 0 1 1 so these two 
test vectors have to be included in any set of test vectors that will obtain 100% fault coverage because these two test vectors are the only vectors that can detect D stuck at 1 and E stuck at 0 fault. So if we include these two test vectors then we will also uh, cover more faults like 0 1 1 can cover A stuck at 1, B stuck at 0, E stuck at 0, F stuck at 1, G stuck at 1 and H stuck at 1. So it can cover these six faults. Similarly 1 0 0 can cover these faults which are highlighted in red. So 0 1 1 and 1 0 0 can cover a total of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 faults. They can detect total 10 faults. I stuck at 1 can also be detected by them. So these two can detect a total of 10 faults. Now we have updated our table. The 10 faults which could be detected by these two have been removed by us because we want to see uh, because we want to detect other faults also. So I have listed here those faults that cannot be detected by uh, 011 and 100. Now we have this table. So you can see that 001 and 101 can detect same faults. See, C is stuck at 0. Uh, can be detected by 0, 0, 001 and 101. 1. Similarly, E is stuck at 1, F is stuck at 0, H is stuck at 0 and I is stuck at 0. So we do not have to include both of them. We can include any one of them. Similarly, you can see that test vectors 110 and 111 are detecting same faults. See, uh, because red is same for both of them. So we can see that if we include 001 and 11 and uh, 110, then these eight faults can also be detected. So this set of four test vectors 011, 100, 001 and 110 can obtain 100% single stack at fault coverage because these four test vectors can detect all the faults which are present in the circuit. Now consider this. We are considering what faults are equivalent. So two or more faults may result in identical faulty behavior means the row will be same for both of them. These are called as equivalent faults. So consider C stuck at 0 and H stuck at 0. Or consider E is stuck at 0 and F is stuck at 1. Consider E is stuck at 0 and F is stuck at 1. So you can see 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Also for F is stuck at 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So these are equivalent faults because if we have one fault, if we can detect one fault, then we can detect other fault also. Means if we can detect E is stuck at 0, then we can detect F stuck at 1 also. And also see from the circuit that this is a inverter. So if the input of the inverter is stuck at 0, obviously its output will be stuck at 1. If you see here E is the input of the inverter and F is the output of the inverter. So if E is stuck at 0, F will always be stuck at 1. So these will be same false. Now consider this, if E is stuck at 1, if E is stuck at 1, obviously F will be stuck at 0 and if F is stuck at 0, obviously H will be stuck at 0 because if any input of AND gate is 0, its output is 0. So E is stuck at 1, F is stuck at 0 and H is stuck at 0 are equivalent faults. Also, if C is stuck at 0, if C is stuck at 0, obviously H will be stuck at 0. So we can see that this C is stuck at 0, H is stuck at 0, E is stuck at 1 and F is stuck at 0 are equivalent false because they are producing the same response. We can check from the 
table also that the response is exactly same 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 for h stuck at 0 we have 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 similarly for e stuck at 1 we have uh, 0 0 0 0 6 times 0 1 1 for f stuck at 0 we have this so these are equivalent false similarly a stuck at 0 d stuck at 0 g stuck at 0 are equivalent false g stack at 1 h stack at 1 i stack at 1 are equivalent false so from these four so from this these four we need to keep only one from these two we need to keep only one from these three we need to keep only one from these three again we need to keep only one so if we remove these three uh, the, there are four if we remove uh, if we keep one and remove three then there is one so we remove one so uh, we have removed 4, then we remove 2, we have removed 6, then again we remove 2, we have removed 8. So we have removed 8 false. We have removed 8 false, so the remaining false will be obviously 10. So when we keep only a single fault from the set of equivalent false, total 10 false are remaining. So this reduction of the set of Single false by removing equivalent false is referred to as fault collapsing. So we can also uh, calculate the number of collapsed false from this formula. Uh, total number of primary outputs. We have one primary output number of fan out stems. So the fan out stems we have only one fan out here. Total number of gate inputs minus total number of inverters. So total number of gate inputs we have for this AND gate 2, for this NAND uh, no, inverter 1, for this AND gate 2 and for this OR gate 2. So total number of uh, gate inputs are 7 minus inverters. There is one inverter, so 10. So from this formula also we are getting the number of collapse fault as 10. So in this way we can do the fault modeling for this circuit. Thank you. Please like and share the video and subscribe the channel.